the things I do for a backyard golf hole. Guys, welcome back to Spud Run Golf. Concrete day. All right, before we get too crazy busy on this concrete, I got this all formed up on the weekend. So we've got rain coming in, possibly later today. But as you can see, a few weeks ago, that water just rushes down through here off that hill. Spud Run's got a lot of elevation changes. This camera doesn't do it justice, but it does. So I'm always fighting water, putting in pipe, trying to get water away from our, our grass areas. And this is a major component that's gonna make this better. It's gonna clean this up, give us a nice cart path with a curb here. So let's get this concrete truck in the buggy. Our main guy, Teddy, in the buggy today. And uh, hopefully we can beat this rain. And uh, we're gonna talk more about this irrigation today too throughout this video. You ready, Teddy? Ready. Oh, and it's master's week. Do you know how to use this thing? Uh-uh. Here, that's recording. Make the spud run community happy. Uh -huh. Hold it level. Can you see the picture? Yeah. Can you see that? That shit didn't break no water. Driver! Five more gallons! Is that your hoe? Yeah! <laughs> All right, you hacks, let's take a break from this concrete and rewind the program back to last week while working on the irrigation installation. I pre-built my irrigation manifold up in the shop. That'll be the first piece of piping we install. Best tool I got is my right foot. How deep our lines need to be, you might ask. And it really doesn't matter how deep uh, these irrigation lines are, for freeze and thaw anyways. It matters around the green where I'd aerify and stuff, but they get blown out for winter time so they won't freeze. Not a big deal. A good plumber's always got a torpedo level. Although I'm not a good plumber, I damn sure look like one. Spud Run is way out in the boondocks. Why is that important? Well, now I'm going to install my very expensive two-inch backflow preventer. The golf green sits nearly a mile from the county road where a water tap is. Could I have eliminated this expensive component? Probably. But I thought it'd be better off to do our part to protect the domestic water supply, and this backflow preventer does just that. Basically, no water can backflow through the irrigation nozzles to our domestic supply. I mentioned in a previous video that I'm going to kind of landscape this area with some mulch and some shrubs. I won't totally be able to hide this, but we'll distract the eye from this. So I think by dropping a little bit would help even more. See, I'm not a professional plumber. I thought this made sense earlier with my grades, but as I'm putting it together, I figured it needs to be lower. That, my friends, is why they make couplers. Here we are down close to personal with our pipe. That sounded weird. I didn't mess around. I've got our manifold layout exactly how it needs to be. I've got our fittings for each zone categorized here. So it'd be nice tonight just to get our stub outs. And I need to tape them so if we get some rain, we don't want any sand back in this line. So just a little bit more to do tonight and uh, we'll call that a win. Well, that's what it's looking like so far. Nice and clean. What do you think? We about cashed out all of our daylight for this day. But the good news is tomorrow's Sunday, so I have more time tomorrow. Today I had to work, but tomorrow we can focus. Uh, I can probably spend six to eight hours on this tomorrow, which should get most of my main trunk lines trenched. I did want to take special mention here to our soils. So Chris that came down from Columbus that wanted, he was willing to donate to come down and plow all my irrigation trenches in the ground. I sent him some pictures of the soils and he said, well, he said, let me come down and see it. So that's when he came down. You know, we had a great conversation. We talked forever about more than just irrigation. That's great. That's one of the great things about this channel. I get to meet people. People are willing to help me and I try to do my best to, to return that favor as much as I can. But look at these soils. I mean, look at that rock. That's the size of, uh, it's twice the size of a football. This creek over the years has just neandered back and forth down this little valley. And that's kind of what we got. That sand trap video, I made a little short and, and put on Instagram, some other channels. It, it got millions of views. And several of the comments was like, man, truck that soil up and bring it to me down North Carolina, bring it to me in Texas. But the, the video can be deceiving because I'd like to say I have rich, deep, loamy topsoil. 
but I really don't. So, you know, we're kind of handicapped what we're working with, but it goes to show you that with proper, with proper planning, maintenance, about anybody can grow some good grass. And now's the time of the year we're in the spring. I know everybody gets excited about grass, so don't get discouraged by your soil types. Now your pH that does matter, but your actual your the the construction of your soil if it's got rocks and stuff in it, uh, you can you can deal with that. So thought I'd throw that out there. Well, time to tear this shit up again, fellas. Want these heads sticking up too much we want them more than flat maybe recessed because they'll, they'll pressure wise they'll, they'll come up my irrigation guy says no pipe dope on any of the valves but he said i could put it out here in the on these it's still windier than crap back here it's always windy here on the golf green in the summer it's a welcome breeze today when it's 40 it's not welcome somebody might say jeremy why don't you just backfill with the dirt completely well a couple reasons i want to bed this pipe to try to keep any sharp rocks or anything from kind of hitting it and sand you know when we do an open cut like on a road to do a sewer tap or water tap or something We'll haul all that dirt out and we fill it with sand because sand is more compactable at a quicker rate. Less voids, less organic material. Uh, so that's the big reason here is to, to eliminate as much settling as possible on these trenches. I've seen too many golf courses. Well, lawns, golf courses, everything. They'll do an underground installation of some sort. Grade it, seed it, and straw it. Then years later, you got dips. And I mean, it's, it's unavoidable most of the time, but here i'm hoping i'll eliminate some of it the pipe a team look it's proof cookies doing work rondo where you want your chair uh, where you want the chair at out here bro i'll save it up here easy yeah. so we just got about 1400 linear foot of one inch an inch and a half pipe in the ground all but the creek side of irrigation heads are done so now we're trying to bed the pipe i've got the whole team well the a team i got i said hey you guys want to drink some beer and lace the pipe and he's like yeah so got them over here snicker them in so now we've got the tedious process of getting this stuff back back to concrete right here is where you know i have a this is a three and a half inch curb down this cart path area I've still got to have a place to get that Toro greens mower out here. So it's going to be right here. We're going to be able to ramp it right up. We'll have a little pad trail that goes over through the mulch to the grass to the green. So we've got to do a little finesse work here. So we just kind of piled this up. Now we're letting it dry. And I should be able to work it now. So that was about four hours of balls to the wall, no stops, no breaks, rub, 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 work, work, work. But that's what concrete does to you. Throw me in the comments if uh, if you do concrete. Here you go. Looks like we got some rain in about an hour. Just finished this, just finished brewing this. So it makes you see uh, how much rain we get. Let's take you down to the other end and we'll show you something. As we walk, I think I've determined I'm gonna get sod and uh turf type tall fescue sod an eight foot strip down through here I, my grass is uh i've had this down for about a week i have zero germination and i check it every day i just felt a raindrop oh i see one so i guess i can't say zero germination there's no one. Oh, oh, oh so on all these patches i actually put down uh, some ryegrass and fescue 
I mean, obviously, I, originally this is all turf type tall, tall fescue alone, but it's it's getting some other stuff in it. Uh, yeah, that water, man, it just comes down a gushing. So we got some bigger stones to kind of burn that up. So I'm hoping that water that comes down, we can kind of catch it, get it down through here. And then our next obstacle is going to be on these big golly washers. We're going to get gravel that washes down here. I'm not too concerned about that because it'll be easy to shovel and clean off. Um, and then the typical rains, I don't think we'll have enough rain to actually wash that gravel down. So when we talk about water management throughout the golf course, not just a backyard golf course, but any golf course, water management is huge. I mean, it's absolutely huge. And most of this stuff's done before golfers even arrive. But when you do it like I do it at Spud Run, it's all ass backwards. Come on. And I get all the time, you need to have a water feature. I think this is a water feature. This thing, as you can see here on the drone, I mean, it plays havoc on just about every single hole. Every hole. We're about an hour later, no rain yet. The wind has picked up a, a bunch. Me and Beerentz messing with the irrigation. We're going to do our final turn on adjustment. So right now we're going to put the nozzles in the green side and test it out. Fire away. Hey! Hip hip! Hooray! That's hip hip. Beautiful. It's beautiful. So guys, it's totally too windy to get a true test of what these are going to do. But we're making sure the pipes are not leaking. You know, just odds and ends of getting our our system cleaned out from pipe shaving. Water in the creek. Water in the creek is a must here at Spud Run. So we see what we see now, we're going to go around to some of the other systems or the other zones, get our nozzles in, and then we'll definitely test our nozzle size when there's no wind. Testing station number five. Comparison. That was not as dramatic as I wanted it to be. It's pretty windy. Number four! That's where I get wet. All right, so basically we got all the lines blown out and we're gonna start playing with nozzles, uh, distances, the flows, just because it's so windy today, we're gonna have to wait and do that early morning or when there's not so much wind. So we get the most efficient time to do it. We still gotta put the rain gauge on. But man, the irrigation system just wants to put where the water duck. Well, up there working on the greens roller and it started pelting on the roof. We're about six hours after we poured this out. I don't care about the rain like we're getting. Uh, over here with the, the, the BS shack, where it's dripping on the concrete. I did put plastic there just so it won't beat holes from the big drops coming off the roof. But the rest of it, this light rain we got right now is completely fine. Gotta get a little concrete out of there, but that's okay. So I know we got some uh, really knowledgeable people here. Superintendents, golf course workers, maintenance guys, mechanics. That greens roller I got, starts up, runs good. Don't have no power. Let's take a peek at it. That's what we're doing up in the shop. Roller projects on hold. It's like a freaking mower shop. Cookie brings his mower out to work on it. What would you say, Rondo? Well, I what? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. could have said it better myself. Good talk, Rondo. All right, the only thing I can think of is this belt just got a little a too, too loose, loose, so I feel like tighten it up. And I know we've got some mechanics out there that watch that are just cussing me right now because I'm doing something wrong, but tell me in the comments what I'm doing wrong. All right, the second evening I just cut this concrete. Man, this project is so fine, so fine. 
it's looking good. We didn't get a ton of rain last night. We've had a partially rainy day today, but I'm gonna sod this. And there's a couple critical things about this sod. One is it's bluegrass. They are not cutting any fescue. I've got mostly fescue out here. So I was very, very concerned about how that's gonna butt up. But you know what? I don't have no bluegrass out here. So I think it's about time we get some bluegrass. Back to what we're doing. This dirt is muddy. It's a great dirt, but when it's wet, it's hard to work. So we're gonna do the best we can. It's not gonna be probably what you'd expect to lay sod on, but we're gonna do the best we can to get it down. Because I'm kind of pushing, we're less than seven days away from golf season officially coming with guests coming here and playing. Not daily, but uh, at least weekly. With this new curb system, this irrigation head here, it was just too far away. I could have rolled with it, definitely could have rolled with it. I just feel better if I get it back to this curb. So before I can do my final grade, we've got to move that over closer to the new curb and just get some better coverage. So that's what I'm working on now. I just had to slow down here for a second, grab the camera, show you what we're doing. Let's get this moved, get back in the excavator, and I'll show you my finesse skills for grading wet dirt here at Spud Run Golf. Guys, I know this video is going really long, but stick with me. You are going to love, I promise you're going to love, as will I, the finished product. This needs to be short. It definitely feels like rain coming. Uh, at least I'd like to get this whole backfield. I'd really like to get this sod down tonight. I'd really like to get it done. All right, let's do a time lapse. See if I can wreck this out. One rule of saw is green side up. Pull it down some more. We just got a few pieces left over here of the saw. We'll put them on this pallet. And I got a couple ideas for it, but oh, so that first load I sent my boy up to get the saw. They came back with some topsoil. <laughs> It's about an hour away, so I have to send him back to get the sod. And actually, it's, it, was deep, it was great topsoils mixed in with a lot of organic material and sand. So I was able to spread that out where they were gone. It's been a workout today. This has been more of a workout than the, the concrete, believe it or not. And it's in the rain. But we're going to have to show you the finished product here very soon. Well, not finished, but... And I got seed from them, so when I get sod, I always try to get a little bag of seed if I can uh, for the edges to just kind of let it blend in. This project is near its end, and I'm happy to say that. Like my edger. this little corner I might have a little ramp right here I can take my greens bar out this rain's wearing me down guys get a golf course dog they said it'd be fun guys I'm whooped but this is what we got rain rain go away what started as a heck I can remember we built this daggone bridge this white oak bridge I remember when we built it okay guys I see you so look at what we got. We still need to clean this up. Probably put stones in that, like big uh, number four stone. We gotta add some flour, some collar. I got hydrangeas on the bank there, but those hydrangeas are not blooming yet. It'll be late summer. It'd be nice to get some collar in that early spring. Here, we gotta do our little cross path for our walk behind. Add maybe a couple pieces of collar, something to maybe some boxwoods to hide the, the backflow. No, don't dig. And you might ask, if you made it this far in the video, why are you doing this in the rain? Why? We're in this spell. We're in this funk to where it's raining pretty much all the time. And we're limited with nice days. Like next week, we got rain, rain, rain. So we just kind of got to work through it. That's what we do here at Spud Run Golf. We work through it. We make the bad turn to good, or at least we try. Now the dog's taking a dump right there. Got to love the golf course dogs, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for playing with the Spud Run Golf. Look at that green. Woo! It's Masters week. It's golf season. 
over and out.